second speaker, Shaira Mancinero. Third speaker, Nessa Iris Agostito. Fourth speaker, Robel Castillon. Fifth speaker, AJ Cuellas Zamora. Here are the members of the negative side. Our first speaker, Jose Angelo Esquera. Our se second speaker, Shiree Mancinero. Third speaker, Saimeya Ray Pinyani Dondo. Fourth speaker, Jos Eric Tumlad. And their last speaker, Lloyd Dayan Mopilano. And our official timekeeper, Giselle J. Dragonell. We also acknowledge the presence of Mr. Mar Marvin Pasqual together with the SBA students to cover this event. <laughs> now, everyone, are you ready? Yes! Let the battle begin. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Before anything else, let us begin with this question. Why do we really need network connectivity, especially in schools? This is because nearly half of schools make significant use of the internet for free downloads of online curriculum software or content products. Because 61% of secondary schools pay for online software and content, and around 65% of secondary schools make significant use of the online curriculum software based on NAACD. Remember people, students, and everybody in this class. We are now in the new era of modernization and technology. We really need internet connection in school since this is one easier and serve a speedy way in gathering information and data for class discussion. This will actually increase the collaboration of students' idea to other people. We know that this internet contains an endless supply of knowledge and information. Using the search engines like Google, we can find the answers on our questions. Also, we have sites like YouTube, which contains video, video that can help us showing skills we could use. This also can help explaining various topics and even online courses. It will probably help the students learn. But because of expensive costs, the use of internet, sometimes students could use the knowledge and internet under their needs. Providing free internet in schools would probably boost their learnings. But if some are worrying on the internet spe speed and trying to say that it, it would be useless to put an internet connection in schools having poor speed, then our government now make ways. It would really help in learning process of students. That's why, ladies and gentlemen, we really need free internet provision in schools to be able for us to be open to modernization in a way of being connected through the internet we have in schools. Thank you. Good afternoon. As the first speaker of the negative side, I will state to you what are the, the disadvantages of schools' provision of free internet access. The internet has come to play a prevalent role in the professional, personal, and educational lives of the most people in the world. Since the inception of the World Wide Web, or what we call internet, more and more information has become accessible to all people through a few simple clicks of a mouse. The world is, literally, at the fingertips of a person connected to the internet. 
the question for educators and parents remains. Though, whether or not there are disadvantages to utilizing the internet in a student's education, nearly every classroom in the Philippine schools can access the internet, a number that grew from 35% in 1994, according to the National Center for Education Statistics. Some teachers use the internet with every assignment, while others take different approach. As with, as with any educational technique, classroom internet usage comes with great disadvantages. So people, I will elaborate to you the three major disadvantages of using internet in schools. First is information. As a disadvantage, Educators may consider this information overload. With all the information available for students, they may find it difficult to choose which information is the most important to a topic, and also when to stop looking. In addition, the validity of the internet sources varies considerably from website to website, which means students can very easily acquire inaccurate or outdated information online. Number two, social skills. While these opportunities provide great details and resources, they can also damage social skills. Students who rely primarily on the internet for information and interaction don't talk to people in person as, as much. Rather, they just email back and forth. This can make it hard to develop listening skills especially when interviewing someone or to acquire inappropriate social skills for face-to-face -face interactions. Number three, parental controls. According to the Princeton University in New Jersey, America, for younger children and even teenagers, the internet can be a vast sea of largely unsuitable materi material. While well, some browsers allow certain amount of control to filter out content such as pornography and violence, not suitable, suitable for teenagers and especially for younger children. It is impossible to ensure 100% safe search, avoiding absolute censorship. A non-internet based education allows parents and educators to select for you. For the good reason, the internet is buzzing with positive information about online education. The advantages are numerous, from lower cost to accessibility to flexibility. However, a quick look around the real world clearly demonstrates that the most students are still choosing traditional classes. Are these people just ignorant? I will say no. Thank you. The invention and development of the internet was the biggest discovery by mankind in the 20th century. Today, the internet is used by more than 50% of the world's population. Its applications are found in every field, be it communication, knowledge, news, shopping, marketing, entertainment, education, and etc. There are numerous advantages of the internet in the field of education like gaining information, news, historical data, communication, and etc. A major advantage of the internet is the ability to access all types of information from library resources all over the world, including magazines, books, newspapers, and journal publications instantaneously. This information increases the learning potential by providing students with the latest information. Also, expands the resources of a smaller library. Students using search engines can find information quicker and more tailored to their specific needs. Using the internet in the classroom actually gets students more excited about learning, says the National Math and Science Initiative, because internet activities are often hands-on and interactive. Students get the chance to directly engage with information rather than possibly listen to lectures. 
the National Math and Science Initiative states that this is especially true for subjects like math and science, as many students find them challenging to learn and relate to. Internet activities can make these subjects easier to understand and can present them in unique ways that fit students' affinity for technology. Using the internet can be very useful for completing projects in schools and colleges. As the internet is an ocean of information covering nearly all subjects known to man, one can find information, research, work, and etc. and required for one project. Going through the information on the internet is definitely faster than reading an entire book on the subject. Completing homework is also easier with the help of the internet. Lastly, although the internet cannot replace books or classroom education, it is one of the best substitutes for those who wish to gain deeper knowledge on literally every subject under the sun. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. The Internet is a worldwide network of computer networks that connects university, government, commercial, and other computers in over 150 countries. Using the Internet, you can send electronic mail, chat with colleagues around the world, and obtain information on a wide variety of subjects. However, there is a rising concern developing along with the growth of this global system. It is about the negative effects of internet. So what exactly are these problems? How do they affect the students? One of those problems is the internet addiction. The internet addiction is not less dangerous than other types of addiction. From the day that internet explosion occurred, this disadvantage has appeared and spread throughout the world without notice. The feature of people having trouble with the internet addiction is that they seem to marry their own phones or computers. Anytime you see them, their eyes are on the screen. For students and teenagers, online games or the social networking websites are a big attraction. 13.7% of people found it difficult to get away from the internet for about a number of days at a time, based on the statistics given by Stanford University. Students are not being lured by these factors. Many students and teenagers come to the internet as a way to hide from the real world and the pressure from the parents' expectation from study. They feel more comfortable and safer when living in a fiction world created on the internet. The dangerous problem of internet addiction is not only about their life tendency but also their, their health. A study published on March 12, 2010 has shown a positive relationship between the use of internet and depression. Specifically, people who are addicted to the internet will be more likely to get depressed than normal people. According to Hilary Cash, an American psychotherapist recommended that 8-10% to of American teenagers get addicted to the internet. This number means that approximately 2 million teenagers become dependent on this system around the United States alone. It is a true alarm for people to recognize these negative effects of internet on students and teenagers. That's all. Good afternoon. Allowing students to have internet connection helps them a lot like instant access to knowledge. The internet gives students instant access to answers via what's in their textbook. In fact, today's kids are already familiar with Googling it to find the answers to questions. The gift of the internet to the classroom gives teachers the chance to give their students a holistic view of any given subject while still giving students the guidance to find the right sources. In classroom, internet research gives teachers the opportunity to teach their students how to assess the quality of the information they find online while removing the one-sided restriction of a textbook. Trend toward blended learning environment. The educate survey found that 75% of students currently have experience with blended online on premise learning. 
this offers several benefits, including a cost reduction for some schools. Blended learning programs often use e-textbooks e to allow their students to have unlimited, unlimited access to their learning material. Cost benefits aside, students say that they enjoy the benefits of blending both online and in-class learning styles. Proven student engagement. An article with the National Math and Science Initiative shows that blended learning styles keep students focused stronger and make them more excited to learn more, especially for STEM. Website creation and access are cost effective. According to a PBS survey, websites are the most commonly used text resources in the classroom with 56% of educators said they be used of a website. Websites, by the contrast, can be updated with new information on a daily or even hourly basis, with some sites even using real-time applications. By using the internet, students have access to the most recent data and therefore are in a better position to make well-informed decisions and decisions on assignments and projects. Distance learning. The internet allows students to connect with professionals outside of the immediate school's campus, in some cases permitting communications at an international level. This can be done through basic applications such as, such as email as well as video conferencing. With distance learning available, students can take a longer range of classes and schools can make up for curriculum efficiencies. So for us students, we only need to use internet connection in a propulsive way. We must discipline ourselves and try not to be tempted to do useless things while class is on the Good afternoon, everyone. Everything about the internet is fast. Website, streamline information and deliver it in quick bursts, making it easy to digest and understand. Many popular video clips seldom last longer a minute or two. This constant supply of available entertainment has reduced the average attention span. Also, students can find essays or test answers for any subject imaginable. And art spent surfing the internet, playing online games, and engaging in a, on social networks can drastically hinder a child's physical development. Most of students are having such time as surfing the net, visiting their social media accounts, and boasting pornography instead of listening to teachers like tools. As one student expressed it, you can have a brief conversation on Facebook during math class and when you look up again the blackboard is covered with symbols and numbers and you have no idea what happened. Another disbenefit of provision of internet access is cyberbullying. Cyberbullying is basically a term to describe the bullying using the internet. This disadvantage can be considered as one of the evilest negative effects of the internet. The negative effect will be worse on teenagers, especially on those who are in puberty with all the vulnerability and sensitiveness. Many reasons why the the school's provision of free internet access has been, has been given evidence, but the reasons for its disadvantages doesn't just stop there. There is also the lack of creativity in teenagers and students. It is also one of the negative effects of internet rooting from its benefits. One significant feature of internet is the unlimited sources of information as said earlier. This feature benefits users by quick access to need the needed info and to ease. However, everything is available. There is no need for creativity. Students don't now have to, don't pay much effort for their project assignments. 
because they only need a few minutes to get to those informations. Well, this happened, so, happened several times. These young people will be dependent on the internet to finish their study. The same situation happens to not only students but also to users at any age. Things get easier in a way that it becomes hindrance for learning and creativity. Shouldn't students be the ones to brainstorm ideas and develop their own learnings from the lessons? Cheating. Nowadays, since we are technologically advanced, the ways of cheating have, le have been leveled up. It is true to say that the internet creates a number of troubles for teachers, but, but the, the internet is the one who gives us resources of information. Is this really a benefit? It can be a disbenefit because of cheat. This negative anger to all homework without a lot of effort, resulting in an increasing academic fraud and plagiarism. Educators have realized this problem and tried to deal with it by developing websites that can check essays and research papers against published content as an effort to deliver the material. Therefore, Changing the treatment culture among students and raising their awareness will be more practical to prevent these negative effects of internet. Also, the school's provisions of free internet access is impractical to most schools because the, the fee for internet is really high. And also, that in our country, we have a slow, slow internet connection that falls at below the average. How can we say that the government can pay for all of these, even if the government can't even pay for the road constructions? How can the government provide for free internet access? That is all, thank you. Now it is time for the interpolation. I repeat, there only five to seven questions should be asked and it will be answered as for two minutes. You can ask any member of of the team on the other side. Except their last speaker. For the first question. <coughs> speaker number one. We know that YouTube, YouTube contains wide variety of videos, right? Then how will you explain that there's a 100% of possibility that a student only use this site for educational purposes? So it basically depends on how they use and how they want to learn by the use of the YouTube. So, so basically, that's about learning. So we can... So we can also have some fun with it or we can use it for some recreation. But the main point is we the YouTube it, YouTube is used for for the benefit of everybody. Like for example in, on tutorials. So students can use it in, in, in some learning purpose also. However you have said that it depends on the user. But do you know that not all users are really that, that educated and that, that dependable on internet? The, not all of them can control themselves from searching such unrelated topics from, from, from the lessons, etc. But you said that it may. YouTube could be one of those apps that could use for learning and but and um, as you just uh, adjust you can just search nonsense for in internet just but you can just search you can just search nonsense you can just search nonsense of things in in the YouTube. So 
So, just like what, just like my And you also said earlier that the government can even pay some some money to for the finishing of of road constructions, but we all know that that is the fund that is the the DPNWH is responsible for that field and that it is out of its league. Your first question. I think you have mentioned that it may, but it, it also may, may not. It is on the on the the verdict of the student if she she is to he or she is to to search such things. She, she, it is on his decisions. And for the for the what I have said earlier, it was said by the first speaker that the the government will already have the the funds to. To fund for such road road constructions and you have said that there it is funded by the DPWH, but. But but the first speaker said that the government already have the funds for for such things. It's quite contradictory. So actually, we believe that we have some sectors of the government, right? So like DPW, it's different from Department of Education. So that that internet provision or internet access by the government, it can also be under the Department of of education or also for some technology yeah, department for responsible for agencies for technology. So it's not it's not just um so basically BPWH is really different from Department of Education. So budget cannot be the fund can be used to any other source <laughs> Another question. So, for example, if this institution or HS will uh, to put a internet free internet access to everyone. So if the oh, if the students that are over five thousand will connect that uh, connect uh, to a certain Wi-Fi, how would the internet fulfill our needs for just five Mbps per second? Wi-Fi zone. So we asked if how can that Wi-Fi accommodate over 5,000 students in this institution? And he ensured that 
the technology is now vast, so nothing is impossible. You said that Mr. Pani said that <coughs> that technology technology is vast and nothing is impossible. So there will be a possibility uh, for failure to occur, right? There will be a possibility for failure to occur to occur. So possibilities may occur, but but if we trust them, they will really cure it. So we cannot do and it's, it's something to uh, we have nothing to worry about. So you said that the internet is bad and there is nothing impossible. Actually, if you believe that nothing is possible, some things in this world are possible. I mean, impossible. I mean, the the average speed of the Philippines is only 5.5 Mbps. Is it possible to reach 100 Mbps or even even higher? So, so there's no, there's no evidence to to prove that that the that there is no limitation or nothing is impossible with the internet. And you, and you have no, and you, and you have no proof to prove to tell us that there's no limit, that's no limitation, that there's no limitation here in our country, that there is limitation in our country's internet connection. According to Akai in Technologies in Internet Report, the Philippines the Philippines falls short. The Philippines falls short below the global average of 7 Mbps. So it means that that and that 5.5 Mbps is not even reached by all, all telecommunication companies in the Philippines. So it means that there is also even a limitation to interest. So as we all know, not all ideas and knowledge are available in our books. So how are we going to go up with that, especially when it is urgent? You said that uh, if our teachers uh, gave us urgent research problems, is that right?
So as we all know, not only the U.S. and knowledge are available in our books. So how are we going to cope up with that, especially when it is urgent? So we all know that our teachers give us uh, uh, research problems ahead of time. So we have much time and uh, much a lot of time to go to libraries. Urgent what? I really see you the third time around. So, not all ideas and knowledge are available in our books, especially in K-12 books that we have right now. So, how are we going to cope up with that, especially when it is So, our K-12 uh, books are just modules. And they don't have much um, details and ideas as much as text as much as textbooks have. So we can widen our knowledge by the use of our library. We can go there and search some more ideas to fulfill our to fulfill our uh, to add up to our knowledge. And also, internet is not always reliable as textbooks or some encyclopedias. So this is a third question, and this is for speaker number one. So why are you triggered by information overload? If this is basically a good sign because we can have different sources to be compared. Okay. So, okay. Why are you triggered by information overload? If this is basically a good sign because we can have sources to be compared. So as a disadvantage, educators may consider internet as information overload because with all the information, students may may find it difficult to choose to all of that information what is right and what is wrong. So they cannot ensure the hundred hundred percent of 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 possibility that that the information is authentic or it is unreliable. But the ideas from those from those data but those ideas from those data are not just put the, there just because of that. They are put because they have the connection that you can add to your knowledge and wisdom. We believe they all deserve to win. But unfortunately, only one winner will be declared. So, what team would it be? Will it be the affirmative side or the negative side? Should the school provide free internet access or not? So, and who will be declared as the best speaker? I know you have one in your head or mind, but who knows? So, we will find out later, but this time, may we call us Miss Angelica Hanzanera to give her word of thanks. We have extended to me 
Rest assured that your kindness will always be remembered. Again, thank you and good afternoon. Everyone, please sit back and relax as we wait for the result. And please, I request everyone to keep silent. We call on Mrs. Analida Sumido, the chairman of the Board of Judges. Good afternoon and congratulations to all the speakers this afternoon. You have really amazed us with your wit in answering and giving your arguments about the topic called provision of free internet access. So maybe first I would like to declare the best speaker for this debate. Are you now ready for the moment of truth? Okay, this is now the result of the judging. With an average of 89.17, the best speaker goes to, it is from the affirmative side, and it goes to, ladies and gentlemen, to speaker number four. Of course, this time the best side who won in this debate, whether it is affirmative or negative, with an average grade, average score of 91, our winner for this debate goes to... 